Hi, well we find ourselves in some most extraordinary circumstances to say the least. And I just want to talk through uh, a sequence of thoughts and actually review a few messages uh, that I've preached for something like the last seven or eight months. It was around about May last year that I first got introduced to some of the teaching of John Mark Comer, Mark Sayers and one or two others uh, around secularism. And to be honest, I had this thought that, gosh, have, have I been asleep? Um, actually, has the church been asleep? Have we allowed this wave of secularism to influence our world so much and to then suddenly wake up to some of the realities. And so I started thinking about it and reading into it some more and of course listening and along with other people. And I, I began to develop a message that had some of those things involved in it. And, and so I got turned on to that a little bit. And then around July, actually July the 29th exactly last year, I wrote a note in my journal, read Zachariah and I'll give you the keys to a generation. I told my friend Stu that that's what I'd heard God sort of prompt me in and so I began to read Zechariah and uh, I'm going to include some of that in a few moments. I also had a song in my head. Now I, that's not unusual for me but this song wasn't one that uh, had been right at the front of my listening but I had a song in my head. It was Andre Crouch, one of our, our favourites that Sue and I used to go and uh, go to his concerts which were really worship services at the Hammersmith Odeon in the 70s and 80s and we loved going to them. And I've since discovered actually to my great delight that he used to go to Bethel and Darlene, Bill's mum, uh, loves him. And the song I had in my head was this, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Now, uh, you know, there's nothing new about, about that lyric. Um, we know it's true. Uh, there's, there's nothing new about that thought, that phrase. But there's something for me about how focused that was. And as I preach the message, some of which I'm going to talk about in this first of four uh, short episodes, uh, I would say jokingly, you know, if I could sing, I I would sing it. You know, if I was Jeremy Riddle uh, preaching, I'd, I'd do what Jeremy does and cheat and, and sing the song. But I can't. But I, I leave it with you and you might want to look up a YouTube version of Jesus is the answer. So I have this sequence uh, of thoughts, Zachariah uh, looking at secularism, Jesus is the answer. And then we found ourselves in this most unusual of scenarios. And right at the beginning of this uh, season of isolation, somebody wrote a post and put a phrase in their post. And, and I hope it's OK if they're watching this. Uh, thank you for it. I, I hope it's all right that I, I stole a phrase, but I don't think it was copyrighted. But the phrase struck me because the phrase was what I've written up here, the disruption of modernity. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that there's something about that. And especially as I'd been uh, teaching a particular message. So let me just unpack for a moment, a part one, because this for me is is really four aspects of uh, modernity and, and the world that we find ourselves in. But you're going to notice uh, an irony. In, in, you really are, because what I'm going to write up here, um, we can't actually do right now. But this is definitely four of the, the big aspects of this modern world, this modernity. And, you know, I was so I've been teaching this somewhere around seven or eight months. I think the first time I preached it was in Duisburg in Germany on a Sunday there. And I just began to unpack it a little bit. And, and I've developed it as often happens with me. And my comment was this. We find ourselves living in a world where we can do what we like. And that is secularism. And I'm going to come back to that specifically in a moment, but a world where we can do what we like. That's very much been the, the vibe, as, as people would say, of our world. You can do what you like. And not only that, but we can go where we like. Now, the path of um, globalization, it, it's got more and more. It's accelerated more and more, hasn't it? And we really have become a, a generation that not just can go where we like, but it's become uh, very accessible. Well, it had both of those had become very accessible. This is globalization and it's really um, hotted up in recent years. And of course, we have a generation that are now uh, seeing where everyone else is going and we all want to go to those places. So we have a do what we like. 
uh, generation a go where we like we also have because of social media a say what we like uh, freedom and that's been uh, quite difficult for many of us to to observe this say what you like and actually I think it's it's actually spilled over into into life and it's not just been in the safety of social media but we have started to see people it seems saying uh, what they like and so we're hugely influenced by this social media world and and then we've got believe what we like because uh, to a large extent I, I would point that in the direction of the the fake news phenomenon so you can believe what we like and we've we've seen uh, some extraordinary statements uh, of people saying that things didn't happen things like the holocaust or some of the great tragedies that we've observed in recent years uh, the big one for me was sandy hook where there are people who say that that didn't happen that's it's just not true so so we've had this this extraordinary world where we can do what we like go where we like say what we like believe what we like are these four aspects of modernity and of course the great irony is that right now you and I as I'm recording this in um, the first week of April 2020 we can't do what we like and we can't go where we like and we're restricted so that's very interesting and that's where for me this started to make me think this disruption of modernity let's just have a, a very quick look for a moment just a, a, a tiny little quadrant I'm going to draw there but I got the first part of this from directly from uh, Mark Sayers, John Mark Comer, one or other of them said, secularism is people who want the kingdom without the king. How much truth there is in that? People want all the advances and the developments of kingdom without an acknowledgement that there's king. But I, I began to, to unpack that a little bit more and realized that people want Christianity without the Christ. So they want the kingdom without the king, Christianity without the Christ. They want to preserve creation without a creator. And this push that they want a heaven without a hell. These, these are a quite striking thoughts about this moment in which we find ourselves living. Four key aspects I would suggest to you of modernity and here we are fascinating to me this year this this year 2020 i don't know how you feel but i, I remember that turn to the the new century that it was it was exciting and there was lots going on but honestly it felt that we were more concerned that there wasn't that great disaster of y2k than we were about anticipating a new century to be honest, I can't really remember where I was 2009 going on 2010. I don't remember a celebration of a new decade. But 2019 to 2020, it felt that everybody was talking about this, this new decade, the 20s, which somehow has something about it um, going back to the 1920s. There were, it was so specific and so, in a way, iconic. And so here we've gone... 2019 to 2020 and and so early on in this year this coronavirus this shutdown this disruption of modernity and we can't do what we like we can't go where we like there's some limits to be honest about even saying what we like and really believing what you like there have been people who've tried to suggest that coronavirus wasn't really that serious well you can't believe what you like anymore because there are statistics out there and there are death rates and there are realities and and so here these four aspects of modernity we are watching them really be disrupted to be stopped to be prevented and what I want to do is I'm going to um, jump in in the next session just to some thoughts about some of the challenges um, of a generation before Corona. And then in uh, the third episode of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the book of Zechariah. I'm just going to unpack some of Zechariah. And then in the fourth, 
I really want to throw out a question. I, I want to start the conversation, which I know many of us are having, and I would call it uh, using the great Francis Schaeffer's phrase, how then shall we live? So these are just the, the four episodes I'm going to go through. This is really an introduction. This four aspects of modernity, uh, this do what you like secularism, and we've seen it. It's, it's quite extreme, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's interesting because there's not much else on the news at the moment apart from Corona. So some of those other subjects that were dominating our airwaves, they've disappeared right now. And then the go where we like, well, of course we can't. And we've got an entire, you know, travel industry, which, you know, it's, it's scary. The, the, the effect that this has had and, and shutting down pretty much the whole world. You know, you can have a thought today that you're having a really bad time in the middle of this. And you might think, hey, I want to run away. You can't even run away. You can't go where you like. Our restrictions here are we can go out for a walk once a day and, and we go to the shops as little as often. So we can't go where we like. And in many respects, there are, even today, I noticed that there was a, a, a very sensible uh, clamping down on the say what you like on social media because it was deemed to be um, the kind of um, fake news that was alarmist and wasn't going to help anybody. So, so here we are right at the beginning of the 2020s. And here we are with the disruption of modernity, I think. And I'm grateful to the person that gave me that phrase. I'll see you in episode two.